This video will cover the basics of organic papaya seed production, including identifying trees that have not been genetically engineered, bagging flowers to exclude pollen from other trees, and processing fruits and cleaning seed. We will not cover details of certified organic papaya production, such as fertility and disease management. Development of papaya varieties through genetic engineering was an intervention in the 1990s to preserve papaya production, which was faced with devastation by the papaya ring spot virus disease. Because genetically engineered plants are not used in organic production, one of the first steps in producing organic papaya seed is to confirm that parent trees are not genetically engineered. To have your papaya tested, a papaya gust testing form should be completed and submitted with leaf samples to the Agricultural Diagnostic Service Center or a similar lab. More details on the testing procedure later, but first let's go to the field to learn how to prepare our samples. Dr. Richard Mansart explains in selecting the right kind of leaf for the gust test, we key in on the length of the petiole. This leaf is too old. We want to collect really young leaf tissue for the gust test. What we need to do is go right back to the very apex of the plant and pick up a very young leaf that has a petiole that is only about as long as the end of your finger, about the last inch. So if the petiole is one to two inches long, that's a pretty good sample for gust testing. The young leaf here is a good example. It's important to note which sample came from which tree, because if the tree tests positive for the transgene, we need to be able to go back to the plant that the sample was taken from and deal with it. So we have to identify both the plant and the tissue that you take from the plant. One easy way to do this is to take a ballpoint pen and using the pressure of the pen, we can mark on the petiole the number that we want to indicate. This plant has a ribbon marking it as plant number 22. So just mark that number on the petiole. Don't worry about the ink rubbing off. An impression from the pen will be made in the tissue. When the sample arrives at the lab, they will check that it is the right size, not much more than an inch to an inch and a half with the petiole. First, one of the leaf lobes is removed. Then, a five millimeter cork bore is used to punch a disc of tissue for assay. Major leaf veins are avoided as they could interfere with the contact between the plant tissue and the glucose reagent. Forceps are used to place the disc of plant tissue into the assay tray. The glucose reagent, which is a gust staining solution, is added to cover the plant tissue sample. A piece of parafilm is used to cover the tray all the way around. The tray will then be placed inside a airtight box with a moistened piece of paper toweling in there to keep the humidity high so that it doesn't evaporate. The box then goes into the incubator. The samples will stay in the incubator for six to eight hours. The development of blue color in the assay is a positive result, indicating the presence of the transgene introduced originally by genetic engineering. A colorless assay is a negative result, indicating papaya tissue is lacking the gus in its DNA and is therefore non-transgenic. Once you confirm your trees are non-transgenic, the next step is to bag flower buds on your preferred hermaphrodite papaya plants to exclude pollen from other trees including genetically engineered papaya plants. There are several ways to cover flowers. The way shown here involves making a loop with the string of a tag. On the tag should be written the date of covering, the variety, and the tree number. These waxed paper bags are folded in three at the opening. The loop of the tag is slipped over the opening. The opening of the bags are then folded down to form a collar over the string. The size of the bag can be slit near the opening to make folding easier. This bag will be placed over the flower bud. Once you have your bags ready, 
it's time to select flowers to cover. Hermaphrodite flowers are used because they produce high quality fruit and have both male and female parts, so hand pollination is not required. Once you've identified a flower that is ready to open, but has not opened yet, you clear the area of other buds. Slip the bag over the bud and carefully cinch the string closed tight. It's important to make sure the string is tight in order to exclude foreign pollen carried by bees or other pollinators. Once you have fruit, it's time to harvest and process the seed. The papaya should be harvested at color break stage and then ripened off the tree at 75 degrees Fahrenheit until the fruit reaches three quarters of ripened color. To process the seed, you will need a sharp knife, a strainer, a food processor with a plastic dough blade or a dull metal blade. Do not use a sharp metal blade as it will damage the seed. A bowl and a bucket and a drying screen or tray and a fan or a drying oven. It's important that organic papaya seed be processed separately from conventional papaya seed to avoid commingling of different types of seed. When you have your processing area prepared, have the papaya seed lengthwise with a sharp knife. Then scoop the seeds into a strainer and rinse to remove excess pulp. Pour the rinsed seed into the food processor, making sure the plastic dough blade is inserted. Run the food processor for approximately three minutes. This will help to separate the seeds from the arrow, which will improve germination uniformity and decrease germination time. After three minutes, strain and rinse the seed. Put the seed back into the food processor and run for another three minutes and rinse again. Then pour the seeds into a bucket or bowl and fill with water. Damaged and unviable seeds and other debris will rise to the top. Pour off the floating material and discard. Repeat this process four to six times to separate all of the floaters out. Finally, pour the seeds onto the drying screen or tray and spread out to dry. Place the seed under a fan to dry for two days or for three to four days if humidity is high. If you are using a drying oven, set it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit and dry seeds for one to two days. When the seeds are dry, double bag them in plastic and keep refrigerated. If the seeds are kept in an airtight container without refrigeration, the seeds should last up to one year.